troops ready yet. Your forces are prepared and awaiting your orders, Commander. Uploading tactical data now. Good. About time we kick this revolution into overdrive. Overdrive engaged. Revolution commencing in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Landing position now in sight. Prepare for touchdown. BlizzCon 2011 is now on the air. Welcome back to Anaheim, California for BlizzCon 2011, the most intense gaming convention on the planet. What a BlizzCon! Gaming enthusiasts have traveled from all over the world. Tickets sold out in seconds. And now, through DirecTV, you've got an all-access pass to everything BlizzCon. Two days filled with 20 hours of live coverage in HD and commercial free. Get ready to celebrate the world of Blizzard Entertainment, Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. We'll celebrate and honor Blizzard's 20th anniversary of gaming excellence. You'll be front row center for the opening ceremony. Good morning, fellow gamers. The costume and dance contests hosted by comedian Jay Moore. For the horn! Delight and fierce tournament play as the best gamers in the world battle for BlizzCon supremacy. And watch the StarCraft II final live as it happens. I feel like I've been watching two men punch each other for several days straight. You'll sit in on developer panels and learn their insider secrets. Go on a rare behind-the-scenes tour of the Blizzard Entertainment campus. And you'll have a front row ticket to the ultimate closing concert, Foo Fighters. <laughs> Plus, interact with hosts Jeff Keighley and Cat Hunter live on the air. Enthusiasm and excitement reign supreme at the mecca for dedicated gamers worldwide. The world's most passionate gamers have come together in Anaheim, California. The big day is here. Anticipation is high as we get set for an extraordinary television event. It's BlizzCon live on DirecTV. Welcome to BlizzCon Live 2011, day two. We are here in Anaheim, California, where 26,000 diehard Blizzard fans have made the pilgrimage here to be the first to play the latest releases from Blizzard, including StarCraft II, Heart of the Swarm, Diablo III, and the brand new World of Warcraft expansion that was announced yesterday during the opening ceremony, Miss the Pandaria. Well, now we're back live for another full day of Blizzard coverage. Hey, everybody, it's Jeff Keeley again along with the lovely Cat Hunter for day two, as I mentioned, of BlizzCon 2011, and today, Cat, We've got a lot of great panels, a lot more Blizzard information, and an amazing closing concert by the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters and Level 80, don't forget. That's right, Le or the artist the formerly artist. known as Level, Level 80, which is the Blizzard in-house band. Let's take a look at what we're going to do today on BlizzCon Live. It's going to start in just a few minutes with the World of Warcraft Live Raid, which is always a highlight of the uh, event. Then we move on to the Diablo 3 open Q&A, where uh, fans will get to question the team, including Jay Wilson. We've got the World of Warcraft classes, items, and professions Q&A. Then the World of Warcraft general Q&A. Then we've got the StarCraft 2 Grand Finals. And uh, there was a, a big upset last night. We'll get to this with Kim Pham at the uh, 2 o'clock. But uh, MMA beat MVP, so we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, I can't wait to actually watch that final match. All right, well, we got the Foo Fighters later, but now we're going to go to the World of Warcraft Live Raid. Check it out. Welcome to the World of Warcraft Live Raid. Your competing guilds are Vodka and Blood Legion. Ladies and 
gentlemen, welcome to the World of Warcraft live right here at BlizzCon 2011. I'm Rob Simpson, I'm from the Blizzard Esports team, and today we have a very special treat for all of you at home. For the first time ever, Blizzard Entertainment has fine-tuned some of the game's hardest content so we can have some of the greatest guilds of all time competing in a death, in the battle to Ragnarosa's death. Now, one thing that's really, really important about this is that we're going to see some really awesome things coming out of both of these people. Now, up here on the stage, on the mic, I have some World of Warcraft devs, Greg Street, Ian Hazacostas, and Corey Stockton. And now up here, some of the WoW devs that are going to be making all the magic happen in the instance, I have Candace Thomas, Matt Webster, Lee Sparks, and Scott Mercer. And now I'm sure this, uh, this presentation is more about the players, is it not? So over on this side, we have Vodka, most recently known for their US first 25 heroic Ragnaros kill. I've got Lancel and Kinesthesia for the Alliance. <laughs> and now over on this side, we do have Blood Legion. We're gonna have Zonker, most recently known for their US first kill of heroic Neth. We have Zonker and Ararat representing the Horde. Woo! But now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need your help counting this down because we want to get this started off on the right foot. So let's get some energy. Let's hear it. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one, go. Boom. All right. So, Ian, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing today. Okay. So this is Firelands, but it's a special setup that we have. We've taken out all the trash. So this is a pure boss run. Boss to boss to boss. They can do it in any order as long as Heroic Ragnaros comes at the end. Awesome. And now just for everybody out there, to give you, to let you know what's going on on the screen, up in the top right corner right now, you can see a feed coming from Kinesthesia. And on the lower right is going to be their progress. As they progress through the instance, that map is going to continually update. The upper left side, or rather just the left side of the screen in general, is going to be Blood Legion's side. That's where you'll see all of their progress. Now let's take a look. They've, they've chosen to start on different paths. They have, yes. Looks like Vodka's jumped right into Shannox. And so Shannox is a salamander accompanied by his two hellhounds. And normally there's an intricate dance that goes on here where you have to lead the dogs around, the master plays fetch with his dogs, you keep the spear away. I, odds are they're probably just going to ignore almost all of that and just power through this and burn him down because that's what the gear level they have is going to allow them to do. So now, are we going to see some pretty big differences in the decisions that they make as far as their raid comp goes, being that this is a speed run? Probably yes. I'd expect to see them take fewer healers than most guilds normally would because they're trying to go as fast as possible. And they might plan their boss order to minimize the number of swaps that they have to make in terms of people respecking or people swapping in and out to maximize the time they're spending actually fighting bosses. Awesome. Now over here, Greg, what, what's going on over on Vodka's side? Vodka is working on Shannox. <laughs> we've got a couple of deaths down, but looks like everyone's up at the moment. So, Corey, what's going on over with Blood Legion? What are we seeing over here? They decided to take on Bethalak first. So a little bit of a different uh, different strategy over on this side. Now, are you, now, in, in your opinion, is there any advantage to either of these players' decisions? Are we, are we going to see something that, that... Is there a master plan? There's definitely got to be a master plan. I think it's just going to come down to uh, figuring out which one can get through that first set of bosses without having any hiccups. I think, for hiccups, I think that was really, first blood. Zonker just took the first oh, kill. Oh, no, already. Can we get... Are, are, is anybody going to boo that? I don't... I didn't expect that to... What? Wow, okay. An incredibly supportive crowd. Let's hear them get back on their feet. Woo! <laughs> Looks like Shannox is about 30% over here on Vodka's side. Oh, we're getting really close. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Vodka. They're really close. They could get that first kill. Only 30% remaining on Shannox. Quickly pulling him down. Looks like they have everything in complete control. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there it goes. Yeah, only about 20 million HP remaining. Now, Shannox is a much faster fight than Beth Black, uh -huh. so you'd expect Vodka's going to take him down first. Okay. The question is going to be, though, once you know, they're each doing all the same bosses, what, how it'll even out in the end. Yeah, oh, and here it goes. It actually looks like we're getting very close to that kill. Oh, about 13 million HP remaining, man. Yep. Ian, so what's uh, 
you know, what, what do you think they're going to do next? Why would they have taken Shannox first? What's their goal going to be? I think probably just because he was right in front. Uh, the way the way the Fire Lens setup is here, there's this ethereal NPC that they can what? talk to that will teleport them around from boss to boss. So you see them fighting the boss right next to the ethereal. And they're getting really close. Only about a million HP left. And it looks like Vodka's going to get go. the first kill and Shannox goes down. down. choose for their follow-up. Now over here, how does Blood Legion doing? When are we going to see that first blood out of them? Looks like they're about 70% down on Bethelax so far here. All right, so getting there. So let's see, is Vodka making any choices as far as changing that raid comp, getting people up? What's that next decision going to be? Looks like they're heading to Bethelax next. Okay, interesting. Oh, okay. So looks like maybe a little swap here. Yeah, and the real question is going to be... They're heading to Bethelax next. So Ian, what are, what are the primary differences for, for Bethelak being on Heroic versus the 25-man regular raid? Okay, so Bethelak is a spider queen, and the whole fight takes place on two tiers. Normally, she moves up and down between a canopy of fire webs up top and the ground down below. And she has a horde of brood of her spider brood that come out to attack players down below while she stays up top. On Heroic, there's an additional type of spider the players have to deal with, as well as the standard increased health and damage values for everything. This type of spider, it's basically like a Baneling from StarCraft II. Oh. It just explodes on detonation. So many Banelings. So many Banelings. Over here, are they? They must be just about to get this kill. Can we hear? I think they need a little cheer. I think we need to hear it for Blood Legion getting really close to that first kill. Can we get some Horde love over here? Almost. Oh, yeah, a little bit of Horde love is pretty good. Yeah, looking pretty good. And they think that they've, they've Looks just... like they're just about at 50% over here. 50? So they're making progress. 5-0? Yeah, and that's actually really impressive okay. because the way the Beth Black fight works, it's a two-stage fight. The first part, you send a few people at a time, usually up top, to slowly work at her, okay. while most of the rest of the raid is dealing with ads down below. Right. Then at the, the second phase of the fight, she comes down and you have to burn her down, which is what you see them doing here. Okay. Now, normally most guilds want to try to get her to like 75, 80% mm -hmm. when the second phase begins. Right. They have her almost at 50%, which means that they really, really sent nice. way more people up top than you yeah. normally would see. That's very impressive. So they've, so they've been sending much more people down than you yeah. generally would. Really able to, to take advantage of that uh, as much as they can. And over here, it looks like Vodka's off to a relatively smooth start as well. Nothing too We're going to have a kill over here pretty quick. Oh, yeah? Give me, give me the play-by-play, -play, Corey. What's going down? So they're just about to polish her off. <laughs> Looking like, oh, here we go. Boom. Oh, now, there it is. I think we're all tied up. Yeah, now the score sits at 1-1. Now, I would I would almost be willing to argue that currently Blood Legion is at least marginally ahead, because that, that is the boss that's probably going to take close to the longest amount of time, at least out of decisions. Yes. Beth Black is one of the longest bosses they're going to have to face. Okay. Now, let's see what they choose to do next. Oh, okay. Oh, and they're mixing it up. Let's hear it, Ian. What's it, what, yeah, why, so, so why here we mean, see... What's happening? Here oh. we see Blood Legion going over to face Lord Ryleth. Um, right to Ryleth. Yeah. Um, there's some reasons why they may have done this. One of the tricky parts with Shannox, actually, is the, the boss that Vaka started with, Shannox patrols around the zone. Uh -huh. So they're going to need to make sure that they can catch him in an efficient spot. Because oh, they don't want okay. him to spend too long waiting and having to run to him. Right, right. So it could just be that, for example, Shannox wasn't close enough for their tastes. So uh -huh. they went straight close enough for their tastes. So uh -huh. they went straight to a different boss that they could take on quickly. Okay. And that's always good. Always, always good to have a redundancy plan if they're not exactly happening exactly how they want it. So let's actually go take a look over at Blood Legion. It looks like they have made their second boss decision. Corey, how, how are they doing? Looks like they're off to a good start. No, no issues so far. If they can keep this up. I think they're going to be doing well. So, Ian, how, how exactly does this boss work? I understand that you got to got to hit the legs. You got to turn him. What? Tell, tell the layman what's happening. Yeah, Lord Rath is a pretty unique encounter. Um, own there, you know, these little gnats swatting at his feet. But you don't really tank him or move him the way you normally move a regular boss. You actually hit his left and right leg separately, and whichever leg you're dealing more damage to as a raid determines the direction that he turns and the direction oh. that he moves. Oh, I know. And Close? Oh, okay. can we switch back to Blood Legion for a second? I think something might have been happening there. <laughs> so one of the big oh. tricks... Whoa! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Getting really close there. Oh, they might be able to do it. Will Blood Legion be able to turn it? Yes! Looks like they're going to be able to get it back to main. Let's hear it for the Horde! Woo. Yeah! 
Oh man, what a clutch save. <laughs> yeah, so, so the, the thing with, with Ryleth is you have to steer him over the volcanoes that it creates, but if he ever walks into the lava, he basically scoops up a big chunk of it, turns around, breathes it over the raid, dealing terrible, terrible damage. Terrible, terrible damage. <laughs>